So in that last example, we said that the wheels don't turn, so they become locked. Now we had to say that because in a, if a car's wheels are turning, then the surface between the wheel and the road is actually stationary. So that point is actually always stationary, and so we need to apply static friction to that case. Now, if a car's wheels become locked, so we can actually demonstrate that on this toy car here. So here, the back wheels are now locked. If the car moves so that those wheels skid along the surface and don't turn, then those two surfaces are moving relative to each other, and we need to use the coefficient of kinetic friction. So in a minute, we'll be looking at how ABS brakes work. But just to prepare for that, let's sketch a graph showing how the frictional force is related to the applied force. So if we have an object such as this car with its locked wheels or a book or any object where we can get to that kinetic friction region, then as we apply a force, Initially, the friction force is the same size as the applied force, so they increase in proportion to each other. At a certain point, the object starts to move forwards, and at that point, it's the kinetic friction that we need to consider. So that kinetic friction is generally smaller than the maximum static friction, but it remains constant as we apply an increasing force. And so the object will accelerate at a greater and greater rate as we apply a greater and greater force. So the graph that we have looks like it's increasing steadily and then it drops down a bit as we reach the kinetic friction region and then the frictional force remains constant. So let's now consider how ABS brakes work. So ABS an ABS braking system stands for an anti-lock braking system and it's basically a system which is now inbuilt into cars as a safety measure to stop exactly this happening. Now that is because the coefficient of kinetic friction here is smaller than the coefficient of static friction which we have applied if the wheels are actually turning. And so the car can actually come to a stop a lot faster if its wheels are always free to turn. And so ABS braking systems work by trying to prevent your wheels locking up when you accelerate really quickly or decelerate really quickly as the case may be. May be. So let's look at this and let's calculate the stopping distance that's required for the same car we had before with a mass of 1,200 kilograms and the coefficient of static friction between its wheels and the road of 1 and the coefficient of kinetic friction of 0.8. Let's imagine that this car is travelling at 100 kilometres per hour and calculate its braking distance if its wheels are free to turn and then it will calculate its braking distance again if its wheels lock up. So let's do that now. Okay, so what we need to do is work out the stopping distance, so how far the tra car travels from when it's going at 100 kilometers per hour to now it's going at zero kilometers per hour, and we need to work out what this distance is. Now there's two ways we can do this. We're going to do it the shorter way, which is to consider energy. But the other way to do it would be to use the kinematic equations. We could use that V squared is equal to V naught squared plus 2AS and then calculate A using Newton's second law. We know that the acceleration is in this case a deceleration which comes about because of the frictional force acting on the car. So we could use these equations to work out this s, which is the distance that it travels. We could put that as an x because this is going in the x direction. So yeah, this x is that s there. So that's one way to do it, but we'll do it with energy. So we know that to stop the kinetic energy, 
goes into work overcoming friction. So when this kinetic energy has all been used up, doing work overcoming the friction, the car won't have any kinetic energy left and so it will be stationary. So we've got that a half mv squared is equal to the work done. So work is equal to the force times the distance. So the force that it's overcoming is the frictional force. So that is equal to the, in this case, the cars are not locked. So it's static friction as they're free to move and so we've always got a stationary contact between the wheel and the road. So it's mu s times the normal force which has the same magnitude as the weight force times the distance covered which we'll call x. So this d's become x and that's equal to a half mv squared. So these m's cancel out. Now what we're going to need to do is this velocity needs to be in meters per second. So we've got that our velocity is equal to 100 kilometers per hour. So that's equal to 100 times 1,000 meters over 60 times 60 seconds. So in meters per second, this is equal to 27.8. Okay, so now let's rearrange this one. We're trying to work out x, the stopping distance. So x is equal to a half v squared over mu s g. So that's v squared, which is 27.8 squared over 2 times mu s, which was 1.0 times 9.8. And solving that on the calculator, we get 39.4 meters. So that's how far it takes this car to stop, given the coefficient of static friction of 1.0. Okay, now let's imagine that the wheels lock up and so the wheel skids along the surface like this and so we need to use mu k in this case. So in this case we can use the same equation as here only instead of mu s we've got mu k. So we've got that the stopping distance in this case is v squared over 2 mu k g. So it starts from the same speed so that's 27.8 squared over 2 times 0 0.80 times 9.8 and solving that on the calculator, we get 49.3 meters. So you can see it's got a much longer stopping distance, which is why it's really dangerous if your tires do lock up, because it means that it takes your car a much greater distance to stop, and so you're much more likely to run into the obstacle that you were trying to avoid. Plus, while the car is skidding, you have a lot less control over the direction it's actually going in.